Hey everyone, Cindy Bishop here with Cindy Bishop Worldwide and today we're going to talk about the 14 effective communication strategies that you need to know in order to improve your business and have a regular following of people. You know, effective communication is absolutely mandatory to the success of your business. Doesn't matter what kind of business you're in, but your personal relationships, your family, and even checking out at the grocery store requires good communication. Now, as a real estate agent, good communication is what makes you exceptional. It separates you from other people. So good communication eliminates a lot of problems like misunderstandings and it creates smooth transactions. Having effective skills in communication is going to be the key to your business success. Now, the five methods of communication, just to keep in the back of your mind, are the following. They're verbal, they're nonverbal, they're written, oral, and they are face-to-face. So I'm wondering, are you tired of thinking you have a deal coming down the pike only to find out you don't? By golly, it's happened to all of us. But it happens more often with poor communication. So let's just keep going. So what are you experiencing in your business today? For those of you that are currently in our coaching program with Cindy Bishop Worldwide, please take advantage of all the wonderful training and connecting with us on support calls. Then, you know, what I know is that you're solving a lot of your issues. But if not, I want you to stay tuned. Pay attention to all of the solutions to master your business in this webinar. There's a lot of it a lot to absorb in this communication webinar and you know we're here to help but it's up to you to be motivated to actually put in the effort to build the skills and do the work so what are you waiting for so let's get started on our 14 effective communication strategy strategies that you need to put into play for your business today The first four I call my core four. First is in person. You know, it's a lot easier, we all know it, to communicate your passion of what you do and how you feel in person. In this particular kind of interaction, you know, they're not only going to hear what you're saying, but they're also going to see and feel it. So everything counts. You can't hide behind the phone or Skype. (laughs) This approach is still one of the best approaches to communicate effectively with anyone and and still the most well-received. Some people understand better when you take them aside and talk to them one-on-one. If you're having any trouble, don't feel bad about doing that. Or if you're taking a tour of their house or a house you're showing them, sometimes they need that little bit of extra help. But just remember, that's something that um, you have uh, in your arsenal. Ensure that you maintain eye contact. You lose eye contact, you lose their trust. And the message also sinks in better when you're focused with the eye contact. Sometimes barriers can be eliminated when you let them talk. So don't you do all the talking. You're going to learn a lot just by listening. In fact, you should listen more than you talk. So you can see how they react and respond. And you also, if you're listening, you're going to learn to react and respond to their stories and figure out who they are by even asking more questions concerning that. So be a good listener. That's an important thing to do. It's great if you're in person. That really applies being a good listener to any um, to any communication that you do. The second is emails. We can't avoid them, can we? Communication via email seems to be a large part of our daily lives, if not most of it. So, but remember this, emails can be amazingly potent. I think they're lethal depending on what you say and what you do or what you think they say. Always craft every email carefully. Make sure you read it over and over again before sending it out. 
Emails lack tone and emotion. And many times the recipient is going to hear something that you did not intend that wasn't your meaning. Lots of misunderstandings in this way. Sometimes we have to deal with a negative email, right? We get them. Somebody's mad at us or we, they think we didn't do something or we're not fast enough to respond. Be sure to draft a response. Read it as if you're receiving it. And make sure you leave some time before sending it back, especially if you're angry. Don't react right away because that's how it's going to come across. Make sure your emails are written well, appropriate grammar, correct spelling, and format it properly. They're going to measure you by how that email looks. I get them all the time. They're like run-on sentences, and I'm just shaking my head going, well, I certainly wouldn't use that person in business. They're no matter what. For the last person on earth, I'd not use them. All right, tone is valuable because it motivates. So one word can mean a different thing when it's said in a different tone of voice. Make sure you use the appropriate tone of voice to communicate any message that you have so it won't be misunderstood. This is true of email. Even though it's toneless and emotionless, you want to make sure that anger comes across an email. You want to make sure your tone is demonstrating what you want it to so they hear it properly. Using the wrong tone can also dim really um, demonstrate or encourage um, little anxiety between people. It can shut them down. So you don't want to demotivate or discourage somebody you know, because you unintentionally <laughs> shut them down. So I'm sure you've had a potential client that disappeared or used another agent, right? Well, this is probably what happened. Something happened in communication because good communication makes people feel good on the other end and it's going to make them feel good about you and they're unlikely going to bolt. So you, you've got to really get this part right because you don't want to end up that using the wrong tone demotiva demotivates them or discourages them and now they're off to the races because they didn't have to build a relationship with you. So this can also happen in emails or texts. I mentioned that before. It's really important that you hear that because emails and texts are toneless and emotionless. You need to create that. And it's super hard to create tone over the phone or in the airways or on the email or on the text, okay? So you've got to really work on it. One thing that helps is taking the time to ask them questions. You can figure out at least what their mood is so you can kind of kind of go behind their tone and, and have it be nothing but uplifting from there. Always start off any conversation with them first and it will go a long way in, in helping you with this. Now, another thing is creating a receptive atmosphere. Make sure you understand that applies to everything, in-person emails, texts, um, all of it applies. It doesn't just have to be in person. So to effectively communicate, you must create a receptive atmosphere regardless of the mode of how you're communicating, like I said, in person or email. It's easier in person, but see what you can do to create an email or text atmosphere that has some tone. Think about always asking a question, like I mentioned before, and you're going to hear me say that again, because questions save you. Getting them to talk saves you. You becoming a really good listener saves you. You know, share a story. If they're quiet, share a story about an upcoming event or an activity. Get the, get the, get the mood appropriate. Avoid any tense environment, which is often created due to a lack of communication, a lack of connection when you don't see or hear what is really going on. You know, in real estate, many clients just smile and seem nice and when all the while they're suspicious of you and your intention or your message, break the ice by finding out who they are and what they want. You know, it's a great icebreaker and often the way into their heart to find out what they want, what they're thinking what their experiences have been, where they're going, what they're doing. Because if they believe you care about them, then they are always going to take the time to invest their time in you. Communication is intended to be a two-way street. Don't just talk. Ask leading questions. If they're selling their home, 
ask them why. Oftentimes, you're going to find they prefer to not leave. They don't want to relocate. Their kids are all settled. They're in soccer, whatever, you know, but it's requiring them, their job's requiring them to relocate. Take the time to find out what they're going to miss out on. What are they going to miss? Where is their stress coming from? And find out the solutions. Get a referral agent for them in, the, in a new area. If they've already gotten one, then connect with that person and get all the information you can to help them bridge the gap. It's going to encourage them to open up. And you can be well guided on your conversation when you're communicating with them. You know, you have two ears and one mouth. You must listen more than you speak. Prepared presentations can often create a better atmosphere. And you always want to encourage feedback in everything you do. So don't ever, from any situation, whether you're in a training with them, helping them understand why they have to do things to sell their house or buying or whatever, you want to make sure that you encourage feedback. You know, give room for the feedback so they can get effectiveness and in value and it'll really afford you the privilege of knowing if your message was well understood by the feeling and the atmosphere from the feedback you're getting. Um, so prepared presentations can often create a really better atmosphere since some people grasp messages easily, more easily I should say, when pictures and sounds are involved. Using presentation tools, you know, you can use Microsoft PowerPoint, you can use Word to communicate, you can use a video with your client and give them the opportunity to refer back to it if they aren't clear about something. So you can actually give it to them as a presentation. Um, it can also be your handbook, which I recommend that you have to, whether you're working with buyers or sellers, to refer to what they need to know on the breakdown of your services in, in addition to your presentation. So it really gives them a good feeling. Now, anytime you engage with others, especially your clients, your training needs to be tailored toward the communication of, of information to help them. Okay. It isn't about you. It's never about you. It's about them. So I used to tell my clients that they were going to know what I knew by their closing. They loved it. You wouldn't think, right? But they loved it. This showed them I was willing to help them keep the power, not give it to me, keep the power to be in charge by educating them what, while I still maintained my position as a leader in the real estate transaction. It was super powerful for them. This was a super great trust builder, I'll tell you. I also used to tell them that if at any time our relationship wasn't a 10 on a 1 to 10 scale, that they, I made them sign something saying they were going to tell me and we were going to fix it. And if we couldn't fix it, I was going to refer them to another agent that between me and between them we would find. And um, that really eased their mind. It really helped them know I was willing to give them up in order to make it the best experience for them. But back to visuals, like the PowerPoint presentations, any kind of slideshow is helpful. Most of us are visual learners. They should not just hear the message. They're only going to remember like 10% of it. They should see it. And this allows in a big, huge way for improved um, comprehension. Um, they will remember more of it. You need to, you need to display confidence in seriousness without being a stiff. You, you make sure you appear confident whether you are or, or whether you're really shaking in your shoes. It doesn't matter. You need to appear confident. A well-prepared organized agent is one that will be more confident. So don't leave it to the last minute. Prepare ahead of time. Don't show up, you know, with, with, without, you know, without, uh, your, your complete package ready to go and in the right place. Remember the environment we were talking about? Meet your new buyer at your office. Don't meet them at a house to show them. No, no, no. That's not professional. Conduct an interview first. Make sure that you're the right fit for them and they're the right fit for you. Go through the process of what they need to do to get the very best deal for them. Um, same way with the seller. You know, the seller 
is emotional about their home. Now, if they hate it, then they're probably not, or it's a divorce situation. But establish that up front. If they're emotional, if they don't want to leave, you might want to meet at the office first and have a good first meeting and then take that next step. You know, for example, preview houses for buyers. Should they see 25 houses? No. You know, it's your job to show them only the amount of homes they can remember. Prep for listing appointments by knowing everything about the comps. Don't just use paper. Call the previous agents. Uh, go view the houses that are still on the market. Be competent. It goes a long way in communication. And when your clients notice um, any uncertainty or seriousness on the topics, you should know when you're communicating with them. They are likely to run the, to the other agent. And you will if you haven't seen it. It's really, it really connects to them when they know you've done your due diligence, that you know, you know your business. When they notice any of that uncertainty, you're, you're doomed. They're going to run. All right. So let's talk about, let's talk about the simple words, gestures, and body language, things that you need to do in real estate sales. The truth is um, everybody cannot be on the same page when it comes to vocabulary, right? So, you know, the, the newspapers always said they used fifth grade English. I think they probably used it a little more advanced than that. Um, not the average fifth grade, um, you know, English, but you've got to, you've got to make sure that you're um, effective in your communication so that you use words that can be easily understood. You don't, you know, when you, when you, when you use words that are not understood, they're too embarrassed to say they don't know what you're talking about. You can be easily misunderstood, waste precious time, and then you have to explain yourself or you get this look in their face where you think they just hate your guts. They don't. They just don't understand. So be a good communicator and make sure they understand what in the heck you're saying. Gestures are very interesting. You want to use your hands to demonstrate your message. You want to make hand motions and signals to establish you know, the subject matter when you are communicating, it helps them actually, it's a visual aid, it helps them understand better what it is you're trying to relay and the emotions behind it. So obviously you lose this if you're on the phone. Um, actually, I'm standing here using hand gestures because that's my style, but you can't see that. Um, this So it shows that you're trying to relay to them in a good communication way and keep a neutral um, and also keep a neutral and a happy expression when you are in person or you're on a video or whatever the case may be. Now, some gesture examples to note, pin biting, don't do that. It shows uncertainty. Eye contact in the body like leaning forward shows you are paying attention. One hand around the neck and the other hand around the waist shows a need for reassurance. So you wanna know some of these things and you can make a great study of these even online. Um, and the final example I'm going to give you so you remember, because these are some of the things that I've seen, is closed eyes and nose pinching reveal inner confusion and conflict. And usually the person looks a little stressed. Um, they're just confused. They're, they're really pulling away. So you may see some version of this if they just don't get it or you're talking over their head. And don't talk over their head. Find out where they are and go there. And make sure you upplay or downplay your presentation to be able to accommodate them. Body language is probably um, one of the most important things. Um, it'll pass your message faster and better, probably in the first five seconds of any meeting. So careful. Don't wait to get started. You need to get started right away. Master the art of using body language when communicating. Avoid body language that is negative as it, it creates a very quick bad impression. For example, slumping, cro crossing your arms, like fold it, um, that just pushes people away. Hands in pocket, ear pulling, they're never gonna trust you. Positive body language would be sitting straight, stand, whether you're sitting or standing, smiling, handshakes, eye contact, also, some things you may not think about. Clean shoes, groomed appearance, and always taking a deep breath before the interaction is what I recommend. A nice, big cleansing breath. Exceptional to how good that works. Maybe because I'm an old yoga person, but that's very effective. All right. So 
we're going to get back to this, but I'm going to start with it first. Act out your message. Show them. Don't tell them. You want to, you definitely want to show them what it is you mean. Um, but do it, do it so they don't forget it. Acting out your message is a very, very, very good way of communicating. Let them see what you want them to do and watch all of their excuses disappear. You try to explain it without visual aids, you're going to have a problem with them getting doing what you need to do. So we're going to go back to that in a minute because we're going to go on the next slide and talk about that and show some examples. Okay, avoid mumbling. Nobody wants Nobody wants to hear mumbling. They want to hear you clearly. They don't want to hear that you're hesitant. And hesitant and mumbling are kind of the same thing. So when you are communicating with people, try as much as possible to speak very clearly, even if it means they're silent and you have to get your thoughts together so that you don't come out like a mumbling, bumbling idiot. When you mumble words or speak too quickly, you may assume that they are clear on the subject, but they're not. The truth is they rarely are and it shows a lack of confidence. So what happens is they don't have confidence in you because it actually shows that you don't have confidence in yourself. Be articulate. Communication is indeed a skill that has to be learned and it's not gonna be learned overnight, but you're gonna work on it every day, especially if you wanna lead any group of people, um, like being a real estate agent and having uh, clients to work with. Being articulate when you communicate uh, makes it easier for them to understand your message. And last but not least, be humorous, but don't be humorous like this guy. Um, I use that as an example of what not to do. I even think he has a wig on. Using friendly jokes when communicating uh, will help pass your message along in a more relaxed way if you can do it, okay? This method of communication has been proven to be highly effective. Um, and it eliminates some tension. That's another good thing about it. So when the atmosphere is unfriendly and intense, being humorous does the trick or maybe a story. You know, if you're not a funny kind of person, don't fake it. Just maybe have a story in your back pocket. Um, and if you must use jokes, don't overdo it. Remember, you're not a stand-up comedian and you won't be well received if you do that. So let's look at what I mean by acting it out. You know, a lot of times people don't understand, I need you to do this and this and this to your house. Take them, show them the outside of a house that's appropriate, the inside of a house that's appropriate. Show them, give them examples of what you want to do. That way they will have a visual of it and they will do it. And that will be extremely effective for you. But don't expect you showing them pictures. I mean, I put them in the car and just show them. And then if they panic because they don't feel they have the money to do something elaborate, you show them a variety of examples that you've already planned out so that they don't freak out. And that way they, they know what they, what they need to do. If they want top dollar, it's your job to show them how they're going to get it. Nobody wants a fixer upper at top dollar. It is never gonna happen. Nobody wants an overpriced house. So it's your job to help them get the top of the range if that's what they want and show them how they have to do it. It's not your problem to figure it out as long as you visually show them how they themselves can get there. We're not their parents. We're the conveyors of information, the professional real estate agent that knows how to help them acquire what it is they're after. Be appreciative. After every communication that you do, regardless of the method, text, email, in person, always remember to thank them. Send them a personal note that's handwritten. That'll go a long way. Send them a little gift, whatever it is, but always be appreciative. Always say thank you for your time. And it's going to cost you nothing. And it's a simple courtesy. Creating a team with your clients or prospective clients helps in boosting your confidence, their confidence in you, and confidence in your abilities. So when you use effective communication, it can not only make you feel pretty darn great, but also will build your business tremendously. Tremendously. 
Now, you know, Rome wasn't built in the day, guys. You're going to have to study communication and work hard on your communication skills. Most people lack in communication tremendously. I'm no different. I have to work at it all the time. So just start. Be motivated. Get the job done. Take one day at a time and work on this. Now, learn the skills, practice them, and be the agent you always knew you could be. And don't be the guy that says, can we start this weekend over again? But you know what? That's not so bad if what you're doing is going a little forward. Maybe you're taking a step back and go a little forward. You're going to get there, but you just have to try. And that's really the key. Now, I did want to point out whether you're currently in coaching or not, um, improvement and achievement is always going to be up to you. The only difference between an agent that is succeeding or not is the motivation they have and the consistent effort to follow a plan. So if you're having trouble in accountability, which I see as a coach, many people do, but they don't seem to fix it or they try a little at a time or they wait a couple months then round, circle back around and say, oh, I need help. You know, everybody can win, but it does take accountability. It does take effective time management and it does take planning. You know, if you don't want to mess with all this stuff, you can then go to work for a company and they will do these things for you. But if you're going to be a real estate agent in the real estate business or any other business, you need to step up to the plate and get this done. These are always the three things that hold people back. It's always the same story. And you've just got to do, work the plan. You've got to do the work. That's what you've got to do. Now, our coaching, as a reminder, and for those that are on the call that are not in our coaching, we have the training, we have the skills, and we have the action plan for you to succeed. In, in addition to the coaching topic webinars, the Companion Agent Education Center is loaded with fundamental how-to guides, videos, and systems to keep you consistently going. You just have to use the tools. I know you have what it takes. To win and I hope you are inspired to wow yourself right now with advancement in your business. I hope I grabbed your attention today so that you can see yourself succeeding mentally. Many of us just lack skills and if we take the time to learn one at a time, it'll actually build your skill bank and you'll do better and better. So if you're not in coaching with Cindy Bishop Worldwide, then contact us for a free complimentary consultation. I do a coaching call with you. If you are in coaching, remember to connect to stay on track with support calls and in occasional calls just to get you back on track. Thanks for joining me today for a wonderful walk through the 14 steps of communication. Have a super, super day.